Cheerio. Bonjour. So I just wanted to touch base this. Well, for me, it's a Friday evening. Oh, my goodness, I have no necklace on. To talk about our favorite luggage consultant, Sarah Boone. I don't even really know where to start. It kills me. This upcoming Valentine's Day, less than four months from now, she will have been in jail for four years. I was told... We have to get our girl in the photo. I was told that about eight months after her arrest, so that would have been October 2020, she was offered a 10-year plea deal, and she pretty much gave them the finger. The prosecution cannot offer that deal unless George's family, George, the victim, says, okay, we're, we're willing to have that deal. Only in the past three months, I've seen interviews with George's parents, and they seem like really compassionate people. They're God-fearing. From their interview, they had no hate for this woman. What they didn't like was the interaction between this woman and George that made them feel uncomfortable. And it turns out their instinct was correct. Okay, but our girl, Sarah, I guess our girl is Shannon. So um, I have to figure out something else to refer to her. Sarah has written a new letter. However, this, excuse me, this letter is to the family court judge. So this crime happened in February of 2020. Well, around March of 2016, Sarah, and I almost called him Bart, because our new cat is named Bart, and he's just running around here. Sarah and Brian got divorced. Well, Brian obviously made a very good living. They lived in a very nice house. I don't really understand what the, uh, excuse me, the comparables are for Winter Park, Florida. But I Googled Earth. You know, I went to Google Earth and I looked up their house. It was a nice house. Sarah was a stay-at-home mom. She, the moment she got pregnant, she stopped working. And I have spent hours trying to figure out what sort of work she did prior. She doesn't have an education, but I've explained that to you. You do not need the degree to get the big fancy job. I couldn't find that she had done anything. However, Brian did make good money because Sarah was able to support herself financially off the alimony and child support from the moment they were divorced on. Plus, so Brian was paying her monthly amounts, monthly for child support, monthly for alimony. The child support, they had 50-50 custody, so she wasn't getting too much there, but she still was getting something. And they sold their house for the divorce, and she received half of the proceeds. From what I can see, she received about $120,000, but I'm not sure, so please do not quote me on that. And $120,000 times two, for those of you in Rio Linda, is $240,000. So that's how much equity they had in their home that they'd lived in for seven years. Well, the markets weren't going that crazy. So Brian's making a good living. They put a nice down payment on the house. However, apparently, Brian has now chose to stop paying his alimony. And oh my goodness, no doubt when the courts pick alimony, they look at, obviously, the circumstance, but they look at the needs of the alimony, <laughs> the person who receives the alimony. And Brian's big logic here is her needs are different. Well, duh. But so Brian was earning that much money. However, Brian has now chosen to stop paying alimony. Before I get into this, I will say this. 
the the day you know what was it February I don't know, February 20 I don't remember the day Sarah found George's body and first person she called is Brian which tells me she's still way too reliant on him we also know known we also known that One moment. My family would like me ice cream. Like to get me ice cream. I would love a chocolate chip ice cream sandwich, please. Period. I'm on with my YouTube people now. I'll see you guys soon, but please be quiet. Period. I love you both. Okay. Yeah, you guys know I just sent that to myself to fake that I have a family. Anyway, that first very day, I'm I'm thinking it's February 20th, but Brian was very compassionate. The That pretty cop is speaking to him, and he said, well, I started calling her about 1130. You know, she's not usually very good about it. I mean, if I were a hostile ex, I'd, I'd have said she had the kid three days in the previous 28. She did. She only had Lucas with a K for three days out of the pr previous 28 days. Now, I will say Brian was going to court to try to get at least child support changed. I don't know about alimony. For whatever reason, Brian has recently chosen to stop paying her alimony. And straight up, that's not really fair. You made a deal. The child support's completely different. But, excuse me, her alimony lasted until 2025. Just because she murdered someone doesn't mean that that agreement should be stopped. For real? But here we go. Okay, now we're, this is kind of long. But remember, Sarah thinks she's so much smarter than all of us. VG... She thinks she's smarter than your middle toe. And Maria, she thinks she's smarter than anything around you. I mean, this is how arrogant and what a narcissist this chick is. Okay. Judge Michael Dean. She stopped with the deer part because in her previous, excuse me, I need to get a tissue, 17 letters, she's always, Dear Judge Wooten, Dear Bankowitz, dear, you know. but she's done with that drama. She's had enough. Michael Dean was the attorney or the judge who did hear her divorce case in 2017, I believe. Okay. In all my attempts, 16, to protect myself and help from the still ongoing hate, lies, slander, degradation, cruelty, and active abuse from former husband Brian C. Boone. Nothing has been improved, made better, corrected, relieved in any way for myself. The respondent. She's the respondent. She's also soon to be a felon. From former husband, the court or judge, I have tried everything. This woman has, it's almost as if she is completely erased from her memory that not only did she zip George up in the suitcase, she made a videotape mocking him. He's begging for his life, and she's mocking him. And her, her, it's not grammar, it's embarrassing. I mean, this woman does not know how to write a sentence. She knows about seven three syllable words and she pops them in as much as possible her sentence structure is embarrassing okay i have made innumerable requests and sent many letters asking for aid from all with no success or existence listening or care by anyone other than myself Trying to believe or altogether stop this inappropriateness, bitterness, anger, and wrongdoing. Oh my goodness, was that just the longest sentence you've ever... That's why it's difficult to read her stuff. 
because she's dumb. I mean, this girl is dumb. She skipped third grade grammar class. But the difference is she thinks she's brilliant. Please see list below of my letters sent to you in the court. Okay, well, she put a parenthesis at the beginning, and then she didn't put one at the end. So, apparently, she's trying to get a copy of her dissolution of marriage, her FOD, final order of divorce. And the reason she's doing that is she wants to show the FOD stated that Brian would pay X amount of alimony until 2025. And we do know the 2025. And Brian has chosen to stop that. Brian has an attorney, and I'm obviously his attorney has advised him, but I trust he's putting that into some sort of escrow. But, okay. I cannot have... Okay, she's looking for the dissolution of marriage. I cannot have because they are wanting payment in order to receive, and I am in jail. Okay, well, Sarah, you don't have one person on the outside that can send that check for $7.50 to get a copy of your FOD. I'm not surprised she doesn't anymore. You guys, if you watch me, you know, we sent her a $100,000 bond with an attorney saying, we will help you. And she took the time in big block letters to write return to sender. This girl's dumb, dumb. Here she's whining about her alimony. We offered her $100,000 for an attorney, and she pretty much gave us the middle finger. She's stupid. I also have no bank, bank accounts after the one I had was closed after having for 30 years due to non-payment of alimony. From former husband and stated in prior letter. Okay. Your bank isn't going to close your bank account because you're no longer receiving your alimony payments. Some banks have uh, issues where as long as you have direct deposit once a month, there's no monthly fee. Or you have to have $5,000 in your account or something. No bank closed her bank account because her alimony was stopped. They may have closed it because it was overdrawn and it had been overdrawn for an extended period of time. It is appalling how uninterested, uncaring, and nonchalant you and the justice system are about my side in any of this and will not listen without the right paperwork and attorney, knowing I am actively being taken advantage of and wrongfully been treated by my former husband, Brian C. Cook. Okay, I already said this. At least she's saying former husband. Who was the very first person she called? Her former husband. Her for former husband was really kind to the cops. I mean, I was shocked he wasn't standing there going, See, my ex is a drunk hoe. <laughs> you guys know why she liked George. Because George had more problems than she did. And it made her feel good about herself. At one point during the interrogation, she says, I have to get up every morning. I have stuff to do. I have to, I have to get Lucas to school. And that was all she said. Meanwhile, it's only three in the past 28 she had to get Lucas to school. That's why she liked George. Because he was a bigger loser than she was. No offense, George. Rest in peace. You have continu continuously enabled him, she's referring to Brian, Brian, who was very kind about her to the cops, and given him a self-appointed right and understanding to keep doing, saying, and taking everything wrongfully and illegally from me, including and especially the love and respect for my son. All in caps. It is not okay. Okay, well, this chick must have forgotten... Her son's now 13. Kids talk. And you, there's no way in the world that that, I guess he's in junior high now. He was in elementary school when it started. Those kids knew about it. And unfortunately, they probably teased him. You know, like, 
Hey, Lucas, you want to go on vacation this weekend? I've got the suitcase. Everything this woman is complaining about is a consequence of her own actions. And she doesn't see that. She's on her eighth attorney now, maybe seventh. Her, re her trial has started over and over again, all because of her. And I'll tell you what, she lost three of the attorneys because of a conflict of interest. They had either represented her or George in previous cases, and that's funny. But the others she lost. The one dude had been with her almost two years, the very first one that resigned just because of we couldn't get along. I'll tell you exactly what happened. She's sitting there saying, battered spouse, battered spouse. And he's like, girlfriend, you recorded your crime. <laughs> there ain't no battered spouse here. She doesn't get it. She's so stupid. It genuinely bothers me. I really believe my dog is smarter. Okay. Here are some of the things she's heard from her husband. Oh, my bad. Ex-husband and son. You're a killer. That's why I'm not doing anything. She's complaining. Her former husband said that on the phone in front of her son. She doesn't know if her son was there. She has no idea that Brian didn't walk out. Why? Because she's sitting in a jail cell. But here's the important part. Whether or not she takes responsibility, she killed George. If she's saying it was battered spouse, well, then she could have run it. If not for her, George would be alive. Okay. You are not important to anyone. Former husband, Brian said that. Oh, okay. What's the issue there? Who is she important to? I'm seriously. You are not priority. Well, he's not. Do you guys know that when she was first arrested, Brian gave money to a defense attorney to help her out. And then once they realized this was going to be a little bit more expensive than the $5,000 that Brian was willing to do. But why would Brian even give $5? I wouldn't. My family's home from football practice. Okay. Now this is what she's saying her son said. That's my, uh, oh, thank you, in the freezer. My family brought me a chocolate chip ice cream sandwich. Well, you were there. Sweetheart, quick, I, quickly, I'm making a video. Say hello. Put your face in there. Let me see it. Look at that. That boy worked hard. Friday night football practice. He got it. his little balls sweaty. Okay. This is what she says her son says to her. Dad says you're annoying and beg all the time. Do any of us have an issue? I've read her last 17 letters. She is annoying. She does beg all the time. I must have missed something. Hold on, hold on, because there's a better one. Okay, I must. I turned the page. Her son told her, you're a killer. And that really bothers her. Okay, well, her son's friends are saying that. I already said that he was in, you know, sixth grade and now ninth or, yeah. They've all seen it. I did say this. It's not just her son. She has no empathy for what her son is going through. Her son can walk into school and be teased because his mother zipped a man into a suitcase, which is bad. But then she made two different videos mocking him. And then she thought she was so smart, she could go talk the police out of it. And at one point, Chelsea, possibly the worst interrogator in the world, asked her, well, how did he get that way? And Sarah went, I flipped him over. Okay, well, you're justifying. You know, at the very beginning, they tell her that George has skin, scratch marks under his neck. Someone's got and his they girlfriend. say, and they say, Sarah, would you mind if we did swabs under your fingernails? She's like, oh, no, absolutely great. Okay, well, they just told you they found skin under his fingernails. And they want to see if it matches with you. And what's your answer? Sure. Go ahead. Fine. 
This is how dumb this girl is. Brian, if you're watching, God bless you. I don't know how you dealt with this chick for nine years. And I'd love it if you reached out to me. I'd love to do an interview. Okay. I, oh, this is what her son tells her. I lie to you because I can. Dad does all the time. I don't know about that. Um, but he can lie to her. She's, this is a woman who a little bit later is going to talk about her. This is her son. She's his mother. She's his mother sitting in jail who is awakened in the, at 4.30 in the morning and given a bag of milk and some Ore or some Cheerios. She probably would like some Oreos. Okay. You make no difference in our lives, Brian tells her. Uh, okay. Sarah, what difference in their lives do you make? The only difference is, I don't think, I don't even think Brian legally has to be home for her phone calls. He's allowing you to speak to your child, and he doesn't have to do that. So she's asking Judge Jean, that's okay with you and acceptable? Is that what you are giving him permission for and to keep doing in front of my son? In all caps. Right, well, Judge Dean isn't involved in that, you dumb twit. I, oh my goodness. Why won't you stop any of his abuse? Verbal, mental, and emotional. You know what I find comical? Sarah abused George. And she abused him a lot. But she abused him so much at one point, she made the choice to videotape her abuse. So she's okay with her abusing someone. But if, God forbid, her ex-husband and son are a little naughty to her, She's offended. It's just like when she was first arrested and she looked at the police officer and she said, am I going to be held in one of those tiny little jail cells? You know, last time I had a panic attack. Okay, well, what happened to George when he was held in one of those tiny little suitcases? This girl, she's more dumb than I ever could have thought. My goodness, Brian, I hope you're watching. Please reach out to me. Next question to the judge. Why aren't you, as my judge, doing anything to hear both sides? Okay, well, he's, he's hearing your side right now, and Brian filed an official motion with the court, so that doesn't really make sense. What else needs to be done to me by my former husband in order for you to help me? You know, that's something. The fact, you know, Sarah called Brian right away. It's almost as she had forgotten, this is your ex-husband. You got divorced for a reason. There was some reason that you did not want him in your life. But once you make that choice and then you get a flat tire on the road, you don't call him anymore because you made the choice for him to not be in your life. Okay. What else can I do? I have not already done for any relief on my side. Remember, her sentence structure is almost painful. Now, this is in cap. Stop enabling. How is this judge enabling Brian? All Brian is doing is now filed a motion to suspend his child support. Well, his alimony. I think his child support was suspended very quickly. He's not enabling her, but judicially, you must know if this is wrong and how... You must know this is wrong in how I am being treated. Her handwriting has started to slack over the years. How funny we've been reading her jail letters for close to four years. I am told every time when trying to reduce any anguish or mistreatment from former husband and co cooperate trying to help, the judge doesn't care what you write. My son now says the same when I correct him on how he's being read, mean and rude to me. She shouldn't be correcting him at all. She's lucky she's even speaking to him. Because I guarantee that final order of divorce had nothing about, okay, and if your mom ends up in jail, you will get to speak to her. She needs to be grateful. Again, 
we offered her an attorney and it was more important for her to make the return to sender look really pretty. Okay, sorry. The judge doesn't care what you write. My son now says the same when I correct him on how he's being mean to rude. Mean and rude, I already said that. He's never going to do anything for you until your trial is over. And even then, it will still all be in my favor. My other document is ready to go so I can take the rest. I have an attorney. You deserve nothing. You mean nothing. Okay, that must be from her ex-husband. He's right. But she meant nothing to him the day she got arrested. She just dealt with a man who was kind. And he was probably embarrassed for her. You know, he didn't want the world to know he married a freaking drunk. Then, former husband gets his precious attorney to file another answer denying allegations. She can't write a fucking sentence. Because I'm telling the truth all the time about his awful lies and I am right. Just like she's right that it wasn't her fault. George died. You guys, before I can remember, okay, only dumb people talk to the police. But she was so arrogant, cocky, and thought she was intelligent enough that she could walk into that police station and she was going to walk out. And obviously she wasn't. She doesn't get it. She does not get it. Okay. Judge Dean. So I have to continue taking former husband's abuse. Sarah... Stop calling him. You won't get any abuse from him. It's as easy as that. He is not calling you in jail. Guarantee he's not writing you letters or we'd have freaking copies of him here. Stop calling him. You won't get any abuse. Neglect, unf unlawful actions, cruel comments, and hate until my trial. If and when it happens. She's upset about that. Your trial hasn't happened because of you, Sunshine. And the JAC, which is, I've told you this before, it's the group that allocates money to um, witnesses who, or defendants who have no money. They've already forked out 7500 They're not going to be forking out much more. However long, that will now be considering my attorney has withdrawn from my care and no date of trial is known and will be undetermined for amount of time. Okay. Sarah, every time you lose an attorney, you start all over. Fresh everything. How much more hate and disrespect will former husband encourage my son to keep lying and overall being mean to me, his mother? You know what? Brian could be sitting, you know, we sit at our kitchen table every night and eat dinner. Kitchen, dinner, table. We sit in the kitchen table. We have a dining room table we don't use. What a stupid waste of space. He could be sitting there every night saying, just, you know, wait, or mom didn't really understand. He could be saying things that weren't saying she was guilty, but were compassionate. But he, he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. That kid is going to school, and his friends know exactly what happened. I guarantee he has had people say, that's my name, don't wear it out, because that's what teenagers do, and that's what Sarah did to George. Sarah, Sarah, and his third Sarah, she went, that's my name, don't wear it out. Please grant my motion and schedule my imperative overdue owed meeting. Oh, I forgot to tell you this. She wrote this as an official motion. I don't know if you've ever been in court, but they have certain paragraphs. You number things. You have an intro and a conclusion. But there is a specific way court documents and motions are filed. Okay. This is all in caps now. So the last, the sentence I said before that and about the last 15 more to those that last sentence, all in caps. She's screaming now. Everyone needs and must have the same understanding now and future. 
Hold on. It's only fair. I only have one pen. Okay, well, that's not true. You've definitely gone through one pen in almost four years. <laughs> Necessary, lawful, active, important to topics. What is the certified notice of delinquent support filed on August 3rd? He's not paying you support anymore. He was paying you child support for a year and a half, and you weren't having the child. This bitch needs to just call it even and move on. We're all still in caps. Please grant my motion and schedule my imperative overdue of me. Okay. Everyone needs and must have the same understanding. It's future and fair. Excuse me. I'm not even reading that. This is how dumb this girl is. In some of her other letters, she comments that she has someone on the outside who's giving her information. By the way, I'm seeing this. She's lost that person on the outside. Did I already say it? But she, she's trying to get a copy of her divorce records. And you have to write a check, and it's a $7.50 check. She has no way to do it because she's in jail. I thought she had someone on the outside. Oh, my goodness. What else can I do? What's left except for begging, which former husband says I do all the time? She does. We've been reading letter after letter of her begging. What am I doing wrong in order to be treated rightfully, properly, ethically correct in order to finally receive your judicial assistance? Well, one thing, honey, is you stop writing obnoxious letters where you, de you diss everybody. How I am and have been and will be treated by former husband, Brian Boone, is unfair, malicious, and wrong and should not be allowed. Please help. Okay, this is what she doesn't get. This is your former husband. It's not your current husband. He can treat you any way, the one, uh, any way he wants as long as he doesn't physically beat you. You are nothing to him. The day the divorce is signed, you are nothing. Again, I couldn't believe how compassionate he was that day. Judge Dean, what was the reason for your comment made in your courtroom about former husband violating my constitutional rights? If you're not going to help or uphold said rights and lawfully allow me to use, what's the point? I, I think this girl received a pass and was not ever required to attend an English or a grammar class. I can't even read this sentence. I'm going to... It's that embarrassing. Okay. You know I do in order for you to remark... And see, they're being violated. She cannot speak. She cannot write. She knows four big words. Oh, I know four words that are three syllables or more. And so I'm just going to throw them in here as much as possible. Please schedule. It is my right. It is my fair. It is fair. Really? So this chick is frustrated because her trial hasn't happened. Meanwhile, it's all because of her. So her, she had, oh, let me get my paperwork right. Her first attorney she had for almost two years. And then he asked to resign and he was granted that. And I will tell you, I know nothing officially. But here's what happened. He kept explaining to her, not only did you videotape yourself murdering George, you went to the police department the next day and then you made comments about how great the day was. It was the best day you guys had had in years or months, whatever. And then they showed you the tape and all of a sudden, oh, George beats me. Okay, so our girl Sarah, the smartest defendant on the planet, it kills me how dumb she is. I mean, she cannot even write a proper sentence. Wrote a letter to the JAC. The JAC has already spent $7,500 on her. That's a lot. Okay. She wrote a letter to the JAC asking for help because Brian is no longer paying her child support. And this was their response to her. Ms. Boone. Shouldn't it be Mrs. Boone? We have received your letter re requesting legal assistance. 
This letter is to inform you that the Legal Aid Society of Orange County Bar Association will not be able to assist you regarding family law matters. Our office receives hundreds of requests each month for free legal assistance. While we would like to help as many applicants as possible, due to limited staff and resources, we are unable to assist everyone who contacts us. As a result, we have established case acceptance priorities to address the most pressing needs of our client community, and thus, we do not accept matters that involve alimony, custody, or time sharing on behalf of a parent who does not have the child 50% of the time. She didn't have her child 50% of the time, even when the court allowed her to have her child 50% of the time. But this is the best part. Okay. This is a cut and paste paragraph that they put on the bottom of every rejection letter. Our consideration of your case was limited and our decision not to provide legal representation to you does not mean that you do not have a good case or defense. You should be aware that the passage of time may prevent you per from pursuing your claim. Okay, they write that to everyone. Just because we're declining you doesn't mean you don't have a great case. Okay, well, Sarah took that the wrong way. She looked at it and went, whoa, they said, I have a great case. We are not aware of any blah, blah, blah. Okay, the rest of it is just garbage. But because of that standard sentence, she thought, well, they've reviewed my case, and they think, I'm brilliant. I have a great case. She thinks everyone thinks she's brilliant. But remember, we sent her a certified Brian. Oh, my God. Ex-husband. I just said, oh, my gee. I apologize. I do not like to take the Lord's name in vain. I don't even know where that came from. It's frustration. And I don't even, I can be very frustrated, and I don't say that. So you've gotten me. Brian, if you're watching this, I don't know how you were compa as compassionate in the past. I wouldn't have tolerated that one bit. I wouldn't have been calling her at 1130 that day to see if she was going to pick up our child. I would have simply picked up our child and then continue with your motion to reduce your child support. Because, my goodness, she didn't deserve it. She didn't deserve a penny. She, she may have deserved alimony under Florida law, but okay. Here is the court's response, and it's one of those hot diggity dogs. This cause having come before blah, blah, blah. Okay. Both parties appeared for case management conference, which included a motion to withdraw by the Respondent's Counsel, Frank Bankowitz. Now, I'm not really sure why Frank Bankowitz was on her family stuff. He was never involved before. My only guess, and I'm not an attorney, if you watch the sofa guy, I have no credentials. <laughs> uh, my guess is because he is listed as her current attorney in her cases, it was just, you know, dropped forward. There were no objections to the withdrawal of Sarah's counsel. Frank Bankowitz is hereby removed. Council shall provide a more proposed order for this removal, blah, blah, blah. Okay, none of that matters. Just more court hocus pocus. Council shall provide a more blah, blah, blah. Case management respondent. The respondent is currently incarcerated in the Orange County Jail pending trial of second degree murder. I just think that's kind of funny that the court simply reminds her of that because it's almost as if she has forgotten this entire thing. She is there because of her own actions. The court cannot hear the respondent's motion for contempt regarding unpaid alimony until after a final hearing is held on the respondent's petition, petition for a reduction or elimination of alimony. The respondent expressed frustration 
at not having matters heard and not being formally informed about her case. She's been informed. The court explained that the family case is on hold pending goodness, I had a hard time with that. Pending the outcome of the respondent's criminal case. There's, this is the court reminding her, Sunshine, you have a criminal issue in front of you. Alimony is not your priority right now. The court finds that permanent decisions regarding relocation and alimony should be postponed until the criminal case is finished. Now they say it a little more fancy than that. And he says, the reason you need to do that, because circumstances will be more clear. The respondent was informed that she may opt for a final hearing on the petitioner's petition for alimony reduction, elimination, and her own contempt motion, but that the court would have to consider her current status of incarceration when making determinations. So that's the court saying, Sunshine, if you really want to go ahead you're probably going to be screwed because the court will see that you're in jail. The taxpayers are supporting you, so you don't need any money for that, and you're not taking care of your child. But you know something? In many other letters, Sarah continues to say, taxpayer, which I am one of. No, you're not. You hadn't worked for two years prior to this. In February of next year, you're going on six years without paying taxes, you dumb bitch. The respondent was advised to ensure that any motions filed conform to the Florida family rules, blah, blah, blah. This, <laughs> this includes utilizing proper captions, titles, and certificates of service. Way, way back in the beginning of this, I said that. The judge mocks her. There are certain ways you write motions. I mean, you have to write this stuff out officially. You can't use your your seven three-syllable words that you know, and even when you use them improperly. Oh, my goodness. The court finds that permanent decisions regarding relocation and alimony should be postponed until the education... Adjudicate. How do I say it? It's adjudicated. Oh my God. This is not a word I struggle with. I'm struggling with it this evening. Of the respondent's criminal cases. The court's saying, we're not going to do anything until we're going to find out if you're going to be sentenced to 25 to life or you'll be acquitted. <sighs> she ain't going to be acquitted. The respondent was informed that she may opt for a final hearing on the on Brian's petition for alimony reduction and her own contempt motion, but that the court would have to consider her current status of incarceration when making determinations. So that's the court's way of saying, if you're sitting in jail, we're going to award in his favor. There's no reason he should be paying you all this money. Meredith and Maria and VG and Chris Caspian. We're feeding her these days. This bitch isn't... I don't like to get that nasty, but this bitch isn't paying anything. The respondent has been advised to ensure that any motions filed... Okay, I already said that. So, the court's letting her know... We're tired of your hogwash. I would love to know what you think about this girl. Harry's wife is a narcissist. Um, that What's that? Oh, Jada Pinkett Smith. Who I didn't really even know who she was. I had heard of her, but I thought she was, I almost said Prince William. I thought she was just Will Smith's wife. I had no idea she was an actress. Oh, and... Now, she was in the car with Tupac when she was murdered. And I've told you before, for whatever reason, I liked Tupac. I knew who he was. I never heard of this girl. Narcissist. Narcissist. But I think Sarah Boone is the queen. 
narcissist. I mean, for real. It's almost frightening. Okay, if you're still watching, I'm humbled, but I'm also completely shocked. Make sure you hit like, hit subscribe, and only about 40% of the people who watch me are subscribed. You guys gotta hook me up. I'm cool, and I am going to focus and start putting out more content. There's things you'd like me to talk about, let me know. And in all seriously, seriousness, thank you for watching. God bless you, and oh my goodness. Please, God bless this America. Make sure you stock up on ammo. Bye-bye.